folks, welcome to Play Branson, the show where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. I'm your host, Chris Meyer, and today's episode is brought to you by iBranson.com, where you can find lots of information about Branson shows, attractions, and lodging. If you're looking for the latest show schedules, be sure to go to iBranson.com. Did you know that each week we launch a new episode on Monday and then we air it each night at 8 p.m. on the Vacation Channel? That's Channel 6 on Optimum Cable or 36-1 if you watch by Antenna. You can find other episodes throughout the day on the Vacation Channel if you've missed a previous one as well. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, or our website at playbranson.com. Our guest this week is Earl Vaughn with a show called The Sons of Britches at the Little Opry Theater in the Branson IMAX Complex. Guess what? Your travel tip of the week. I've got it here for you. It's to get this, the Flavor of Branson Dining Guide. It's your best resource to learn about Branson restaurants with over 25 coupons in it. So you'll save money and you'll know about the whole Branson restaurant scene. We'll be right back with more Play Branson in just a moment. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. And on today's show, for the second time, I have Earl Vaughn. Now, Earl, it's been a long time since you've been here. It's been four years. Yeah, yeah. so welcome back to the well, show. Thanks, it's great to be back, Chris. So, um, I, I, I tried to match you the best I could. We said we were gonna kind of look like Easter eggs today, Yeah, right? exactly. So, uh, yeah, yeah, just paint us up. And... So, you've been in Branson for a really long time. I have. And I started I coming. To, yeah, tell oh, people sure. about your history. Okay, I started coming to Brand. Well, I've been coming to Branson for a long time because when I was younger, we'd come and go to Silver Dollar City once a year. And uh, finally, in 1979, I was living in Springfield, Missouri, and got hooked up with a guy. And we came down here and uh, did an audition for the Branson Inn. And we played at the Branson Inn for three years. And then I, a friend of mine that was a drummer, he's passed away last year, but um, he took me over to see the Ball Knobber show. Well, that's the first show, show that I'd seen in Branson. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I made up my mind that that's what I'd like to do is show business, you wow. know, get out of uh, doing nightclub stuff. And uh, so that came about, but before I got to the Ball Knobbers, I did uh, one season at the Roar Clark Theater in 1984. I uh, was on, not with Roy, but I was just on the stage production. And so uh, then I left there, went back to nightclubbing again for a while, and then got a chance to audition for the Ball Knobbers. And they put me on stage the same night that I auditioned. They put me on stage, and I did four shows with them, not knowing if I had a job or not. Yeah, so they were just they were trying to see if you could pick it up quickly. Yeah, and so they hired me on the following Monday. I had to work another gig that we had booked mm -hmm. on the weekend with this other group, and uh, so. And this was playing guitar. Playing guitar and singing. Okay. And uh, I opened up the the uh, I did the first number on the first half of the show and the first number on the second half of the show, and. Uh, so I was with them for almost 21 years. 21 years. Now, yeah. if I remember correctly, like the rumor was that most guitar players would only last about three years. That was what, that's what I was told. And they so, said, yeah. And, yeah, they said, enjoy it. You're only gonna be here three years. Yeah. Well, and that changed. So, so you lasted through like seven guitar players. Yes, I did. Yeah, I'm the longest running guitar player that they'd had in their history. Yeah. One and guy ahead of me was there for 10 years, I think. Yeah. So that is a long time. Yeah. And so what happened after that? 
Well, what happened after that? I moved to St. Thomas and I lived on St. Thomas. My wife was a travel nurse at that time and she was working a contract at Roy Lester Schneider Hospital down there. And uh, so I moved down there with her when she said, I wanna move down there. And I said, well, okay, we're selling the house. So we told our boys, you got 30 days to figure out where you're going because <laughs> we're moving. And so we stayed down there for about as long as I could take it. As long because, as you didn't like the island life. Well, I liked the island life all right. I had a good time, but I got what the, you call island fever, which is claustrophobia, because mm. it's only 32 square miles. Yeah. And so it doesn't take you long to see the island. You can see it all in a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to get somewhere where I could drive for 50 miles and you know see different territories. So we moved back. And I lived in Oklahoma for just a little while. And then, we, well, we lived in Florida for just a little while with our sons who were working down there on some yachts. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they finally told us after 30 days, we don't know where you're gonna go, but you can't stay here anymore. So they kind of kind of reminds me of what you told them <laughs> exactly. a long time ago. Exactly, yes. Yeah, that's exactly. funny. Yeah, it was a turnaround, but it was, it was all good. So yeah. And uh, so I lived in Oklahoma for, for a while. About, uh, I started migrating back. My wife was working the contract there with a uh, dialysis unit. And so we just started, uh, I started working way back to Branson. And uh, Were you still playing guitar even at home while, while you weren't I play playing? Guitar, well, I played guitar uh, on the island. Okay. I met a guy on the island who had, Known a friend of mine I'd known for 30 years. Now, isn't that odd? Yeah, it's wild. And something else happened on the island that was strange. I was talking to a guy. We were living just above Sapphire Beach. And I was down talking to a guy who was managing the condos down below. And uh, he said, that accent, where are you from? I said, I'm from someplace you'd never heard of. And he said, where? I said, Branson, Missouri. He said, I helped my brother manage the restaurant at Devil's Pool Restaurant in 1985. So mm -hmm. there you go, small, small world. world. It's a small world. Yeah, so. So you eventually got back to Branson. Eventually, yes. And uh, so I hooked up with uh, the Horn family mm -hmm. and uh, I started by running lights and sound at their show. And then finally I got back on stage again. So I was with them from, uh, I guess the latter part of uh, two, 2008 until uh, they closed their show in 2012. Okay. So anyway. And then did you, is this when the Sons of Britches yeah, was this born? Yeah, is, this is when the Britches were born okay. out of that. Because three of us kind of decided, they, they wanted to get out of the music business and we kind of decided we liked staying in it for a while. So that's how that happened. And so you, you've been with this, and I tell me if I'm wrong on this, but you guys have been doing this show now for 11 years. We started in 2013. We started putting well, almost, this together. Almost, oh, yeah. Yeah. Almost and so, 11. Yeah. And we've met some interesting folks along the way. We're friends with uh, Roger Miller's only living brother. He lives in mm. California. His name is Wendell. Mm. And he came to our show one night and never said anything about, never requested a Roger Miller song or anything. And uh, so the lady that was with him said, do you know who this guy is? No, he had Miller Country Band on the back of his jacket. That's all I knew. She said, Roger Miller's brother. And so we're friends with Wendell now. Yeah. And uh, he's he actually has played fiddle a couple times on our show. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it was fun. Now you, you just, you got, uh, well, you got a new band member. Uh, yes, on the show, and so we do want to talk about that. Okay, um, but this is pro this is actually probably a good spot for us to stop, and then we can get more details on the show in the next episode. Okay, next, next segment. So we'll okay. stop right here. We'll be back in just a second with more with Earl Vaughn with Sons of Britches. We do uh, just about every genre. If we know a verse and a chorus of a song of any genre, we'll do it. You know, the great thing about this show, it's the only one like it in Branson where the audience gets to pick the music. Lots of fun and laughs. would recommend this for the whole family. Hey, work, man, work. 
We're the sons of bitches. Sons of bridges, that's it. Bridges with an R. Oh, with R. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We're here today talking to Earl Vaughn, who's with a show called The Sons of Britches. Now, let's tell people what is this show because they may not have any clue. Well, this show has evolved uh, from when we first started in 2013. Uh, it has evolved to music, comedy, improv. Uh, our show is a request. We're the only full request show in Branson. Uh, people come in and they can ask for what they want to hear. Now, we can be stumped. We can be stumped. Anybody can be stumped. Yeah. But if we don't know the song that they want, we either you know do another one by the artist or we just make something up and say that's what they're going to record in a couple of years. <laughs> you know? So that's how, we, that's how we roll. So you don't necessarily have a exact set list for your show. None whatsoever. I'm I'm over with set lists. Yeah, I did set lists for a long time, and <laughs> over so, tw over almost 21 years. So you guys perform at the Little Opry Theater, yes, over sir. at the Branson IMAX, IMAX Entertainment, Entertainment Complex. Complex. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, that is a what I call an intimate theater because it, it only seats like what 200 and some people. Yeah, 210 or? is maximum. It's yeah. stadium seating, so there's not really a, unless you're unless we're packed. And you're sitting on the side. We had to cheat back a little bit because you look at our backside yeah. a lot if you're yeah. sitting back here. But uh, yeah, so it's it's excellent for what we do because we have folks shout out their requests at the beginning. We'll do we'll do like four songs to kind of warm ourselves up, and warm them up, let them know okay. what we do, and then the rest of the time it is requests. And so over either you have to have a ton of songs up here. I got a lot. That you would do that, yes, right? I mean, right. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, some of the stuff, now some of the stuff I have to, uh, I'll have to look the words up on the smartphone and the smartphone is uh, way a lot smarter than I am. Right. But anyway, uh, I have looked uh, up lyrics and stuff like that. Most of the time I've got the melodies rolling around in my head. Wow. So it's, it's interesting. Well, so you've been doing this for quite a long time. And so I, that makes your show unique and different by the fact that people can just request the song. Right. We're the only two hour show in town that, that you can watch in 90 minutes. <laughs> now, that's the way I set it up. And people say, well, you know, or, you know, I know you're thinking, uh, how can you do a two hour show in 90 minutes? Well, I said, the other two hour shows, forget to tell you, 25 to 30 minutes. Of the showtime is intermission between the first and second act, and we don't have a second act. Okay, yeah. So and you don't lot, have an intermission. No, and a lot yeah. of time, my time, we didn't even have a first act yet. <laughs> so anyway, so it's it's a ton of fun. Yeah. So you've got two other guys in the show with you, right? Tell my us business, about those. My business partner, Louis Darby, uh, Louisiana State Fiddle Champion twice. Uh, he is also a real estate agent, so he he. Uh, is real estate agent by day and fiddle player by night. Mm -hmm. and uh, But we do four shows a week, so it gives him a little time to do his real estate business. And he just recently opened up his new business. He's got another one that he, he used to work for another company. Now he's opened his own business okay. up. It's called New View Realty. For those of you folks watching that looking to buy property in Branson, Lewis Darby, he is a... Uh, Good guy. You'll, you'll, you'll get a few bonus points for plugging him like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Today. I told him yeah. I was going to plug him. <laughs> but you have another new person. On yes, the, we do. Because I, I noticed Randy Plummer has left the right. group. So. Yeah. Randy decided to retire a couple of years ago or three years ago. Uh, right after right after COVID, mm -hmm. he decided he was going to just retire. And so I don't know if how much he's retired yet or not. I think he's still doing some gospel stuff. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, David Edwards is our new bass player, and I, I became acquainted with him. I played one gig with him, and uh, back at Treasure Lake, I got called up, and the guy said, I need a guitar player, and so I went and worked it and worked with David, and uh, I logged his name in on, a, on my phone just for, because, you know, I like to keep in contact with anybody I work with, and uh, so we got a call. Uh, from Randy Plummer, we had a thing booked in 
Kansas, out at uh, Greensburg, Kansas. And that's about five, well, no, it's about eight hours away, I guess. It's uh, just before you get to Dodge City, just okay. a little out of Dodge. And Randy called and said that he was not feeling well and couldn't make the gig. And this was on Friday night, and the gig was on Saturday. It's not good. No, it's never good. Anyway, so I thought, man, who am I going to call? So I called David Edwards. <laughs> I called him about 8.30 at night on a Friday. And I said, uh, David, I said, how'd you like to play a gig with us? And uh, he said, sure. And so he was thinking, you know, a couple of weeks out or whatever. He said, sure, where are we going? I said, Greensburg. Greensburg, Kansas. He said, when we're going? I said, be at my house at 5.30 in the morning. And so we left all the way out there and all the way back. We played two gigs out there. And uh, he just became the, yeah. our bass player. So if, if someone is going to go to your show and you have people yelling out requests, um, is it is it mostly country? Is it country? Is it rock? Is it gospel? Like what kind of variety? All of the above. So they're going to get a little bit yeah, of everything. Yeah, they're going to get a little bit of everything. If we know it, they get it. So if I, do you know any Bon Jovi? Probably living, could. Li living probably, on a prayer? Probably could pull that off. Yeah. Uh, I know we do some Rolling Stones. We do some Billy Joel. We do, you know, you just, uh, All sorts you of just never know. Do, do you get where people start to yell out the same songs that you can kind of get idea? We've got what we call the Century Club. Now we've got folks that's seen us over a hundred times. Over a hundred times. Yes, and they and they never see the same show. Wow! Because it's always different with everybody coming in different That's every crazy. night. You know. So uh, anyway, yeah. So we have like probably six or eight couples that have seen us over a hundred times. Wow! And they live well. We've got one local couple that's seen us over three hundred, but a lot of our a lot of our folks have been they're out of staters, yeah. Oklahoma, Texas. And so, yeah, so it's a... And so I'm guessing with you and Lewis, there's a, there's some interesting banter that goes on, and this is where that improv comment oh, happens, yeah, we've too. Had, yeah, we've had one guy uh, that has filled in a couple times on bass that uh, has dubbed us the Smothers Brothers of Branson. Okay. Because, I mean, we, we're just on it, you know? Yeah. And we get up there, and it just starts clicking. Okay, the show, play. I'm showing here, you tell me if this is wrong, the show plays on Sunday and Mondays at 8 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays at 2 p.m. That is correct, sir. That's correct. That is correct. And it goes, folks, through the end of December. So be sure to go check them out at the Little Opry Theater. Yes. Uh, and we're going to be back in just a second to wrap the show up. We'll be right back. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. We're wrapping the show up today. Thanks for watching. Uh, our guest this week was Earl Vaughn from the Sons of Britches show. That's over at the Little Opry Theater. Um, Earl, tell people where they can find you at. Okay, we are on Shepherd of the Hills Expressway. I think the address is 3562. It's the Little Opry Theater and the IMAX Entertainment Complex. We'd love to see you there. Folks, you can find this show uh, playing on Sundays and Mondays at 8 p.m. and then Fridays and Saturdays at 2 p.m. And it goes through the end of December. Folks, that's it for today on the show. But next week's artist is Martin Bennett with the King's Castle Theater. I look forward to talking to him and getting to know him better. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube. You can also find previous episodes at playbranson.com. If you have a performer you'd like to see on our show, let us know. Send us a message through Facebook. We're always looking for new guests to have on the show. We want to know who you want to see. And when you need help planning your next Branson vacation, be sure to go to ibranson.com. They can help you with shows, attraction, lodging, the whole bit. Uh, or you can call them at 877-ENTERTAIN. I'm Chris Meyer, and I'll see you next week here on Play Branson.